For the last few decades, robots have mostly been confined to production halls and have been used almost exclusively to perform trivial and repetitive tasks. At the same time, we have envisioned a future where these machines can become more than just that. We want them to be able to go wherever we go, to use tools and manipulate physical systems as effectively as we do, so they can become skilled co-workers who can assist us in our daily lives. Thanks to the tireless efforts of both research and industry, we are now approaching this new era of robotics. Especially the legged robotics community has made tremendous progress in improving the locomotion skills of their platforms. Quadrupeds have now the capabilities to safely navigate through rough terrain and can even perform dynamic maneuvers like jumps and backflips. Moreover, these platforms are now commercially available such that they can be applied to various use cases. Given this reliable and stable locomotion foundation, we can now extend the skill set of these robots to interact with the environment. In this work, we use Boston Dynamics Spot to investigate this grand challenge. Spot is designed to be stable, robust, and easy to operate, which relieves the user from the burden of motion optimization and provides a safeguard from reckless operation. However, these highly desirable qualities come with the price that the control access granted to the user is restricted. Specifically, direct lag control is not enabled and consequently, users have only limited means to regulate foot placements. In other words, Spot's overall behavior must largely be treated as a black box. In this work, we study Spot as an augmentable research platform and discuss the impact of its restricted control access on its capabilities. Since Boston Dynamics' own proprietary arm was not yet available at the time, we equipped Spot with an external, separately controllable robotic arm and explored the challenges and abilities of such a setup. Since our combined platform is comprised of a Kinova arm mounted on Spot, we will conveniently refer to it as SPOVA for the duration of this talk. Our overall goal in this work is to use SPOVA to perform dynamic grasping maneuvers. By doing so, we are working towards the goal of making mobile robots more efficient in performing manipulation tasks. I would like to start with showing some experiments that we conducted first, and afterwards I will give an overview of the methodology that we used. In this first experiment, we investigated if and how the individual platforms can work well together. For this purpose, we tasked SPOVA to interactively follow a visual fiducial marker wielded by the user. It can be seen how SPOVA uses the degrees of freedom of both the legs and the arm to track the target with the onboard camera. This behavior simplifies the task of keeping the marker within sight while not having to perform too aggressive maneuvers. Furthermore, we demonstrate how the combination of arm and legs can be used to expand the platform's reach and enable it to perform more flexible grasping motions. In this example, SPOVA retrieves an object that is placed under a table, which makes it difficult for the arm to reach without risking collisions. Our motion planner comes up with a solution that leverages the additional degrees of freedom of the mobile base which enables SPOVA to safely pick up the object. The most important ability we wanted SPOVA to have is to dynamically snatch an object off the ground while walking by. The main challenge when performing such a maneuver is that when the arm swings sideways to pick up the object, it afflicts disturbances on the mobile base which causes it to deviate from its planned route. And consequently, it will fail in grasping the object. To circumvent this problem, we apply the following methodology. 
First, we collect data by sending various control commands directly to the physical system and record its resulting state. To emulate the platform's behavior, we formulate a simplistic parameterized dynamics model based on the ARM's mass distribution. To ensure that this model predicts reality well, we apply a parameter identification procedure using the previously collected data. Finally, we use the resulting fine-tuned model for trajectory optimization. To do so, we introduce the grasping targets to the optimization framework in form of objectives. As a result, we receive optimal nominal control trajectories that we can then pass on to the physical system for execution. For more details about these individual methodology components, we would like to refer you to the paper. This image shows an example of the trajectories generated by our framework for the grasping task that we have seen before. The blue dots show the planned state trajectory for SPOVA to follow, and green visualizes the controls that are sent to the physical platform. We can see that our fine-tuned model counteracts the disturbances coming from the arm by pushing the base into the opposite direction. By using this framework, the experiment can be successfully repeated several times in a row. It is also robust enough to handle slightly different scenarios, for example, when the object is set to different pickup positions. We also experience cases where SPOVA fails to grasp the ball. These cases typically arise due to a more complex behavior of SPOT's internal controller that is currently not captured by our simple model. For example, SPOT sometimes slows down due to the disturbances created by the arm's movements, causing a delay that brings the individual components out of sync. To summarize, in this work, we take SPOT, a reliable and easy to control mobile platform with restricted control access, and study it as an augmentable research platform. More details about our findings of how to best control SPOT in this context can be found in the paper. Furthermore, we combine it with a lightweight external robot arm and use the resulting physical platform to perform dynamic grasping maneuvers. We overcome the arising challenges by building a model, fitting the parameters from experimental data, and use it to generate control commands through trajectory optimization. We show that even for a simple model, a variety of fast and dynamic maneuvers can be achieved while benefiting from short computation times. It will be part of future investigations to improve the robustness and reliability of this platform even more. One possible avenue would be to generate more data through physical measurements and use it to train a more comprehensive model using machine learning. Furthermore, since we are currently deploying the control trajectories in an open loop fashion, SPOVA is not able to make up for inaccuracies accumulating during the execution. A solution would be to introduce an additional high-level feedback loop in form of a model predictive controller. We started to investigate this topic in some additional experiments. The demonstration shown here requires SPOVA to independently and repeatedly retrieve an object from previously unknown locations. Since the deployed object detection method can lead to inaccurate position estimates for large distances between object and camera, Replanning during execution is needed. We do so by updating the motion plan based on the new detection data while SPOVA is moving towards the object. We will continue to further improve this methodology in order to enable even more effective and efficient behavior. Finally, since Boston Dynamics proprietary ARM is now commercially available, we are interested in investigating how our approach can be applied to this well-integrated system.
Thank you very much for your attention.